Well, this morning we're going to be talking about mechanical thermometers only. Uh, we do a whole series of electronics, we'll do those later, but these are mechanical uh, bimetal uh, liquid actuated dials and liquid and glass thermometers, so we're going to go through those. And the um, We'll speak a little bit about vapor actuated and gas actuated thermometers. We don't do those also. We don't do those here at Palmer, but those are competitive products, and we'll just talk about some similarities and some differences, so you'd be familiar with those in the marketplace. A uh, bimetal thermometer operates uh, using a bimetal strip, two different metals that are fused together, each with different coefficients of expansion. And as it heats, one overcomes the other one and rotates the uh, spring, removes the bimetal material in one way, bends it, and it, when it goes down, the temperature goes down, the other metal overcomes the first one and pulls the uh, bimetal material back in another direction. These are generally wound into a coil uh, that can be a flat coil or a uh, linear uh, coil. and. Uh, the bimetal thermometer material is uh, usually welded together by extreme pressure. Put the two materials together, uh, weld them with extreme pressure, and then they cut them into strips and uh, roll them on rolls and sell them to the thermometer manufacturers. This is a uh, flat wound bimetal coil on the left, and then uh, in the center is one inside the dish can, and then we have the little surface thermometers, and these are held on to pipes or surfaces by magnets or a uh, spring that goes around a pipe. The bimetal is uh, wound into a coil for our thermometers, uh, the regular thermometers, and it's spun and you have two ends that are attached to a staff and to a mechanism to hold them inside the thermometer. And as the temperature goes up, one metal overcomes the other and it will unwind the coil or wind it up and it's attached to the stab which moves the pointer. Here are three different coils from our production area. They're all in correct relation to each other in size. This material is a little wider than this, you see. The material, you, you pick it, you wind a coil to cover a certain temperature range, a number of temperature angular degrees of movement on a scale. Uh, you have, say, 320 or 300 angular degrees of movement here. The longer the range span from a low temperature to a high temperature, the shorter these springs are. When you get a very long spring, that's required to do a short span. Like our shortest span is 25 to 125, and that takes a very long spring. And you will see in our literature that it says you cannot order that range in a two and a half inch stem. The reason is the top of the coil would be up here where it's welded and that would burn the coil so it has to be a four inch or longer stem. The other ones you can put shorter springs in short stems. The also the same coil is used for the same span. For instance the 0 to 250F uses the same coil as the 50 to 300F. Your starting point is just a different place but the span is the same. So here's an example as the uh, spring is heated, it will spread apart and it rotates the dial or the needle over the dial and you get a temperature reading. This is a uh, line drawing of the two major thermometers we have, a back connected and an adjustable angle. Here's the coil, the staff goes to the pointer here all the way through and the, the uh, Staff goes all the way on our thermometer to the bottom and is spot welded to the bottom of the spring here. What that does is as the spring rotates, it rotates around the staff which keeps it from kinking back and forth as it rotates. In this angle here, this dark area is a spring that looks like a Mr. Slinky toy. If you remember those Mr. Slinky toys that would walk down steps, that's a small version of that. And that allows this drive from the staff that goes to the bottom of that spring to the top of it and then another short staff to the pointer that allows it to flex. And then there is a, a wire coil out here to protect that spring inside of a bellows mechanism. What's the biggest danger to bimetals is uh, vibration. 
severe vibration over time will break the spot wells where the staff is welded to the spring and then when where it's welded up here to the to support mechanism. That's your biggest danger of bimetals. So here is a picture of the internal mechanism and in one of our adjustable angle thermometers. This is an inner tube, an inner stem that uh, protects the staff. The spring is spot welded to it right here. Then the staff goes through and it's spot welded to the bottom of the spring. And now this is an entire supported mechanism. Uh, we have a replaceable element version we'll show you a little bit later where this entire cartridge of the dial and pointer and everything come out. So you have a protective coil here over that spring. This little darker section here is that Mr. Slinky spring inside. And then this is the top of the, the pointer staff uh, where it goes into the pointer and that's what rotates and turns it over the dial. This bushing here is inside the uh, threaded connection on the thermometer on a, uh, well this one right here on a uh, adjustable angle, but this here would be inside, would be down here on a back connected, there would be no spring here. And then this protrudes in through the a hole in the back of the case and it's attached and then the uh, dial covers that. Here's a uh, another picture of a bimetal, just some uh, you have a welding here and welding here, and you have uh, a, we have two different versions: one with a ro removable bezel, and one without. This is a cartridge for replaceable elements. You'll see the spring and the support, and this entire thing goes in and out of the thermometer by taking the front off, so you can replace the guts in it without uh, changing the whole thermometer. Uh, our basic thermometers again are adjustable angles and back connected. The adjustable angle and the bottom connected, you can set the uh, stem to be at the different positions on the compass or a clock or any angle in between. Those can be set uh, for whatever your needs are. We have two basic lines of bimetal thermometers. Uh, we have the original All-Star heavy duty line, which is all US made. We build what's called the All-Pro, it's a lighter duty thermometer. Our main uh, push in for this thermometer in the market is uh, HVC market, uh, but some other people are buying it uh, just because it's quite a bit lower cost. Uh, we have three and five inch dial sizes available, primarily the back connect and all angle configurations. Both units are accurate to plus or minus 1% of the range span. So zero to 250, 1% of that's two and a half degrees. So that's your accuracy over anywhere on the scale. All offer some type of recalibration adjustments. We offer ranges from minus 100 up to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit equivalent Celsius, and some dual ranges, F and C, if someone needs those. Uh, we have uh, all of these have dished anti-parallax dial faces. That means that the graduations on the dial are on the outer rim, which is raised above the plane of the inner part of the dial, so that it's they're pretty much on the same plane as the pointer. If it was uh, a flat uh, dial, like uh, some manufacturers, and you look at the thermometer with an angle, you'll get an error because the uh, pointer is above the uh, graduations for the temperature. We have optional stem lengths up to 60 inches uh, as standard. Longer special order stems are available for some temperature ranges. That's uh, because some coil springs, because uh, of the range span, are more powerful than others. A 25 to 125 spring is fairly weak, so if you start getting into very long stems, it simply won't pull the mechanism, especially on an adjustable angle. These units are all designed to comply with the ASM EB40-0.3 specs, which has to do with air tightness and water tightness and so on. They're all hermetically sealed. There are a number of people out there in the market who will tell you that their thermometers are the only ones that are hermetically sealed because the bezels are spun on tight and cannot be removed. The term hermetically sealed, all that means is airtight. And if you have a uh, our quarter turn bayonet style removal bezel on tight, it's airtight. It will not leak. It's watertight. So uh, as long as that's on tight, it's fine. The All Pro is not removable. It's a crimped on bezel and it cannot be removed to replace a broken crystal or change to a plastic crystal if needed. 
All external parts for both families are 304 stainless steel. We do have an optional 316 stainless steel unit in the All-Star family. And those are mainly de designed for the offshore oil drilling people where they're exposed to salt air and corrosive chemicals. So those are available if you get into that market at all. We have some um, unique features. Uh, you saw the unique cartridge design construction where you have this support staff inside here. This will, can come out as a cartridge on replaceable elements, but they're all built internally like that. Nobody else has that kind of mechanism. We do very heavy wall stainless steel in these cases. Uh, these were originally designed to meet a mill spec, which is probably not used anymore. And these were used on uh, ships, submarines, and so on in the Navy. And they had to withstand a 150 pound sailor climbing on them using them for a step without deforming the case. Again, all external parts 304 stainless steel unless you specify the optional 316 stainless. The removal bezel, quarter trim bayonet allows you to replace the uh, regular instrument glass crystals with plastic or safety glass. That's a laminated safety glass that's available. The standard thermometer has an external recalibration adjustment nut on the back of the case, and we'll show you a picture of that later. The replaceable elements, we do not have that feature because the element comes out, there's no direct mechanical connection to the case, so there's no way to hook up to the ring gear and pinion on the regular uh, external readjustment. We'll talk about recalibrating those in a moment. This is the uh, replaceable element. There's no direct mechanical connection to the element, so you just take the bezel off, pull the entire guts out as a cartridge, put in a new uh, cartridge. This is our sanitary bimetal. Uh, dairies use these. A lot of other people use them for sanitary applications. They have tri-clamp fittings on them, sanitary fittings. They also have replaceable elements as standard. All this stainless steel is very expensive, so if they break that thermometer instead of throwing all that away, they can uh, just pop the bezel off, pull the, put a new cartridge in, and put it back together. And by the way, these adjustable angles, they're adjustable angle cartridges also. You just need to straighten the thermometer up and drop it down in there, and then you can flex it after it's inside. We have a unique line of uh, bimetals nobody else has called our uh, slip fit. This is designed to go into the same thermal well as a glass thermometer comes out of. You have this step tapered stem. So if you want to get rid of your mercury thermometer, you can pull that out and put in a bimetal with the exact same stem, fit that same thermal well, and uh, don't have to use those ill-fitting adapters that some people supply, which don't work very well. This is the recalibration nut right here for the uh, regular thermometers that have a, there's a ring and pinion in here, a ring gear on the back of the dial, and then when you rotate that, a pinion turns the dial underneath the pointer for recalibration. This is another unique uh, all-star feature. It's called our universal fit. What this does is allow you, say you screw your thermometer in and you know a pipe thread crushes as it goes in, and you might end up with a thermometer turned at an angle like that, or upside down, where it's difficult to read. So what this does, you can, you can loosen this set screw and you can rotate the entire mechanism, internal mechanism inside that outer stem and then lock it back down and have it positioned correctly for ease of reading. We have adjustable union thermometers. These are compression fittings uh, that you can slide up and down as you want. Say you have a thermal well uh, for a uh, four inch probe, but your thermometer you have is a six inch probe. Or if you want to be able to be flexible and use this in several different depth thermal wells, you can do that. You can slide it down and uh, screw the, in the connection in and then tighten it around the stem and hold it in place. These compression fittings come with uh, two sets of compression fittings internally. They have a soft gland and a hard set of inserts. The soft gland can be used over and over so you can take that thermometer in and out and move it around. The hard inserts, when you tighten down on those, you bite into the stem and if you change it, you have to have a new set of inserts to go inside the compression fitting. 
The soft inserts are good up to about 100 PSI if you're using it without a thermal well. And above that, you have to use the uh, hard inserts. And this is available with and without the replaceable elements. This is the All Pro class. This is a lighter gauge stainless steel, adjustable angle, slightly different uh, mechanism as far as the design of locking it down, not near as heavy duty. The bezels are again crimped on, you cannot remove them. You can get them with the F and C dials or F or C. This is the uh, ones we were talking about earlier, the two inch bimetal, uh, quarter inch diameter stem, quarter inch MPT, and then the lower connection. This is our uh, surface thermometers. We have uh, ranges up to 750 degrees. This is a magnetic mount, or we have the strap-on pipe mounts. And uh, we can get an economy model does not have the max min indicating pointer, so the standard model does. And there are several variations of those available. It's about a two-inch dial size. They're accurate about 2%. Bimetals are very easy to read. Uh, good accuracy, low cost uh, compared to other types of thermometers, fairly fast responding, fairly rugged, uh, biggest enemy is vibration, uh, and they will stand, uh, you know, light vibration, no problem, but severe vibration will eventually destroy the spot welds in the stem and break them. And they'll generally stand most normal environmental conditions, good bimetals are usually waterproof and uh, airtight, dustproof, can be washed off. Most use universally uh, uh, universal bore size of 0.260 in uh, thermal wells, and everybody makes that thermal well. Replaceable element versions allow low cost repair of broken units. And on a replaceable element version, instead of using a thermal well, if it's a low pressure application, you can actually use the thermometer housing as your thermal well and just replace the guts if they're broken instead of having to take the whole thermometer out. All stainless steel. External recalibration except replaceable elements. The adjustable angle and the bottom connected, you can set the uh, stem to be at the different positions on the compass or a clock or any angle in between. Those can be set uh, for whatever your needs are. We have two basic lines of bimetal thermometers. Uh, we have the original All Star heavy duty line, which is all US made. The uh, universal amounts, uh, amounted versions allow orientation of the dial if you have a uh, thermometer that ends up upside down or at a weird angle. You have no hazardous waste disposal issues with bimetal thermometers, quick delivery, normal delivery somewhere between one and two weeks depending on our workload. Uh, some disadvantage of bimetals is they are subject to damage or being knocked off calibration by a severe shock or vibration especially the replaceable element versions because they are not mechanically connected to the housing of the case. Uh, errors are not always uh, evident, so you better uh, just check them and make sure that they are uh, they look normal compared to other similar products in the area. Heavy vibration will eventually break the spot wells holding the bimetal spring to the coil to the uh, staff. Uh, we can liquid fill these things to reduce this vibration issues. We can fill them with glycerin and uh, silicon. Uh, silicon is uh, difficult to contain because it uh, has a high level of molecular creep, so it's uh, more prone to leaking than glycerin filling, filling, but we can do either. You don't want any uh, glycerin fill around places where there's sparks because it is flammable, but silicon is not. Uh, this is the only commonly used temperature measuring device that cannot be NIST certified. They will not repeat to the same place every time. When you go up and down, they will come back within the 1% allowance, but they won't go back to the exact same spot each time because of the hysteresis of the mechanics inside. So anything that will not repeat exactly the same point each time cannot be NIST certified because the certificate's worthless. The, the thermometer won't go back to the same place. Prolonged exposure to and cycling into high temperatures especially above 800 Fahrenheit will cause accuracy drift and you're constantly, if you're using them at high temperatures, you constantly need to recalibrate them. They're generally not as accurate as other types of thermometers. Uh, long stem versions have potential errors caused by internal friction, adjustable angle units, 
uh, are allowed up to 1.5 percent of uh, span error due to the uh, friction caused by the angular mechanism as you bend it over. That's ASME spec. Surface bimetal accuracy is affected by poor contact with surface, high air flow across the thermometer, and high levels of vibration, so keep those in mind. Other types of thermometers now are uh, board-on tube type thermometers. These thermometers use a spiral wound board-on tube inside and they're running a liquid or a gas or vapor into those and that uh, causes it to uncoil and move a pointer. Our particular thermometer, we actually use two of these, one on top of the other side by side in the mechanism. And there's also in the center here a little tiny bimetal coil. What that does is the ambient temperatures around the case changes, this bimetal compensates for that to remove the error caused by constantly changing ambience around this liquid fill coil. So we're moving again by filling this with a liquid or gas or vapor. Uh, it uncoils and it moves a pointer which is indicated on the dial. Vapor actuated board on thermometers uh, these are mainly used in the HVC industry, commercial industry, refrigeration, food process, or food service where they have refrigeration. Uh, we don't make these here at Palmer. The scales are nonlinear. As you go up, you will see each scale division gets further apart. And you can get capillaries up to about 75 feet in length. And what you have here is a liquid in this uh, probe that as it's heated, vaporizes and pushes a vapor down and moves the pointer by increasing pressure. So the accuracy is fairly good up here, not really good at all down here. So keep those in mind. But again, we don't make those. Uh, you're limited about 450 degrees on the top end and best accuracy is in the upper two-thirds of the range. Uh, gas operating board on tube systems. Again, we don't do these. Uh, we use a liquid actuated there's a some inert gas, some people use nitrogen, that as it's heated expands and uh, moves a pointer. These are fairly accurate, generally 1% across the full range span. And uh, you can go all the way up to 1200 degrees on 649C. The primary difference, these are fairly comparable to our liquid actuated dial thermometers as far as accuracy and range ranges. The bigger difference is on the high ranges like this, uh, This is they won't do this entire range all at once. Uh, they will go from like 400 up to 1200, where on our liquid thermometers we can go from 200 to 1200. So Palmer makes a double wound board on tube liquid actuated. This has a liquid, could be uh, mercury, or we have a, a proprietary liquid, it's a non-mercury fill. As you heat it, it expands and goes up through a capillary. This is the bulb that contains the liquid, and then there's a smaller diameter here. There's a capillary. It goes up, and it goes into that board on tube and moves the pointer. You can do remotes. We can go from uh, minus 100 up to 500 with a non-mercury fill, and we can go to uh, minus 30 up to 1,200 degrees, not all in one span. The, the temperature will be 200 to 1,200 on the top end with a mercury fill. Accuracy is one scale division regardless of range and the there's a bimetal in here we talked about compensating for ambient temperature changes. We can do all side types of stems, capillaries. Uh, we have what we call the rigid and remote. The rigids are these where the stem is directly connected to the thermometer and these can be either an adjustable angle or a fixed angle versions of these and then we have the remotes with the flexible capillaries. So in general the general thermometer is a three and a half inch or five inch dial size uh, for the two types. In the remote we also have a six inch dial size. We'll talk about that a little later. The rigid back or all angle configurations. The pointer shaft operates directly from the center of the double wound coil with no gear drives to wear out or jam up like some of the other types of thermometers on the market. Accurate to one scale division, full scale, and it is traceable and can be certified to NIST. Available ranges from one minus 100 to 500 for liquid fill, 
minus 30 to 1200 for mercury fills. Stem lengths up to 10 feet for rigid units. These are generally used in tanks. Remote capillary lengths up to 50 feet for mercury filled and 15 feet for liquid filled. The uh, thermometers have a light gathering domed glass or plastic crystal. There's flutes all around it. Gathers light from every direction so there's no shadows on the dial. They all offer external recalibration adjustment. There is also optional RTD or thermocouple sensors that can be placed inside the probes with, with outputs for remote transmission. Optional settable electric contacts, if you want to use them to trigger something, turn something on or off, you can do that. But you have to supply power for the contacts. Maximum and minimum tidal tail pointers available. This is the 35 and 50 A series. Uh, those are mercury filled. 35 and 50 AL. If it has an L on it, it's liquid filled, no mercury. And it will also say on the dial liquid filled. If it does not have that on the dial, it's a mercury filled thermometer. This is the recalibration screw on the back. You do it with a screwdriver. If you look at those on the thermometer, you'll see a strip of uh, blue paint over that. That just tells us if you send a thermometer back for repair that. It has been a change in calibration. We know that somebody's moved that, so uh, we'll just uh, check them when they come back. Three and a half for five inch dial sizes, adjustable back or fixed back connection, and those would be uh, like a 35 A R or 35 A R L for a rigid fixed back, not adjustable. This is the adjustable angle. A series, mercury filled, A L, non mercury. This has the same step tapered bulb as on a liquid and glass thermometer, so they will go in the same thermal wells and replace those. Inch and a quarter of 18 swivel knot, that's the universal connection for liquid and glass thermometers, so that will interchange. All external parts are 300 series stainless steel except the swivel nut, and that's nickel plated brass. There are stainless steel nuts available as options. This is that fluted domed crystal I was talking about. These flutes gather light from all around, so there's no shadows on this dial. There are optional alternatives, maximum pointers, electric contacts, anti-vibration bearings. If you want to put this in extreme vibration, that will make it live longer. These will stand extreme vibration and continue to work. Same type of thermometer, except it's a small diameter stem, half-inch NPT. These go into the same thermal wells as a bimetal thermometer, same options just a different series of thermometers with different connection and stem. This uh, is our 935 and 950 series. Uh, this has a compression fitting on the stem 3 8 inch diameter. This will go into a thermal oil design for a 3 8 inch diameter a thermocouple or RTD and then the compression fitting you can slide it down and lock it in place. Everything else uh, is the same other than that stem configuration all same options apply. These are the remote units. We have the 35B and C, 50B and C. The difference is the mounting. This has a foot that can be put on the top of a tank or you can move it and, and put it on a wall behind uh, by locking this up. Then this one has a, a fairly flush fitting, fitting flange. If you want to mount it through a panel or something then you can put screws through here to, to hold it in place. There's also uh, U brackets in the back where you can attach from the back if you don't want to put screws in the front of the panel. Again, the same options uh, mercury or non mercury fills up to 50 feet with a mercury fill capillary, 15 feet with a, uh, a non mercury fill. This is a special thermometer designed for tanks. It's got a, uh, a long capillary. You can get these in various lengths. Standard is 5 feet. You can go up to uh, 50 feet with mercury fill and 15 feet with uh, liquid fill. And this has an inch and a quarter by 18 swivel nut threaded connection that will go into uh, a union hub if you want to go from that to a pipe thread in the top of the tank. And these are just sitting there on the top of the tank where you're monitoring that. Same, all the same options, construction other than that stem configuration. This is a six inch dial thermometer. You have either a rear flange where you can mount it on a wall and uh, this goes through the screws go through here and here you have a, a flush mount 
uh, from the front. And if you want to put it through and mount it to a, uh, a flush mount panel. So we have the same uh, options as far as temperature ranges and same capillaries and so on. Options as far as maximum pointers, contracts, and uh, standard options. So here's the settable maximum pointers. You can, uh, the contact switches will look similar, uh, not different color codes, but the contact switches are settable here with a rotating knob through the dial. You can get a thermocouple or RTD output. This has a, a Type K thermocouple output in it. It's going to one of our handheld meters. And you can get uh, those different configurations on remotes and fixed connections. So these are very easy to read, even from a distance. Very good accuracy. They will withstand very high vibration and shock. They're fast responding. There's multiple bump sizes and styles, many different types of connections. A more accurate and stable than similar vapor units and wider range spans than gas actuated units. Again, all stainless steel construction, external recalibration, multiple head mounting versions for remote units. They can be certified to NIST and they have three year warranty. Disadvantage to these thermometers if the capillary becomes kinked or broken, the thermometer will fail. You'll lose the pressure inside it. The uh, hazardous waste issues due to mercury fill units. Other than that, there are no issues. The next category of instrumentation are liquid and glass thermometers. All liquid and glass thermometers operate uh, pretty much the same way. There are a couple of uh, basic versions of them uh, called total immersion and partial immersion. A liquid and glass thermometer is a piece of cane glass that is drawn and has a capillary or a bore drawn through it while it's hot. There's a wire pulled through it, very small diameter wire pulled through it while the glass is in a semi-molten state. And when it cools, it leaves a bore inside and that uh, is where the liquid goes. The bores are relatively uniform on high quality uh, glass from Europe and uh, the US, but those, uh, the two glass manufacturers from both of the the U.S. and uh, Europe have now stopped making thermometer glass. It's just not economically feasible since liquid and glass thermometers are kind of disappearing. Uh, pretty much all the glass now being made for thermometer glass comes from China and the bores are not very uniform and they're also uh, kind of dirty so that's something that you need to be careful with for the future. But very few precision glass thermometers are now being uh, made using this Chinese glass. As uh, a liquid is heated or cooled, it expands or contracts within the bore. There is at the end of the bore a bulb, a thin walled reservoir. Um, in wall thermometers, it's usually just a little round uh, reservoir at the bottom on laboratory thermometers or more industrial grade thermometers. It will be a, a glass cylinder that's closed at the bottom, has very thin walls and contains the reservoir of mercury or other fills that operates the thermometer. As that reservoir is heated or cooled, that liquid expands and goes up and down the bore. And these thermometers are specced with a bulb bore ratio size, the length of glass with a certain bore size versus the volume in the, bore, in the bulb in order to get a certain temperature spread over so many uh, linear degrees on the glass tube. Mercury is linear in expansion. It means as it goes up or down, every degree division is the same distance apart. The uh, spirit fills that are common in many thermometers now, spirit fills are either a very high grade of kerosene, uh, those are a dye is added to that, or some type of alcohol base with a dye. And the dye can be red or green or blue uh, or black, uh, something to show up and the expansion rate on these spirit fills is not linear. That means as you go up the tube, every degree division is a little further apart than the one below it. So you need to make a scale that expands as it goes up, and that's kind of difficult to do when you have a printed or engraved scale and keep it accurate up and down the scale. The, if a tube is overranged, it's run up higher than its range, there is usually a little expansion chamber at the top that might take 
10, 15, or 20 degrees over the top of the uh, listed range. And if you fill that up and you continue to heat it, it will blow that thin wall bulb off the bottom. So the bottom of the thermometer will blow out, not the top. A, um, the, fill th the fill liquids are uh, good up to about, well, we can only go to about 750 now with mercury because of the glass, not the mercury. You can only do up to 750 with uh, mercury right now. The spirit fills, the common spirit fills, alcohol or paraffin base, are good up to about 300. The different types of fills uh, are, uh, if you want precision reading, you need to use mercury. You can make a mercury thermometer with a very short range span with accuracies of a hundredth of a degree. But the spirit fills, no matter how fine the divisions are on the scale, accuracy can never be better than a half degree. The basic liquid and glass thermometers are what you commonly call laboratories, either an engraved scale on the glass tube itself, they use a, uh, they coat the glass tubes in a wax, and then they engrave a lines in the wax uh, using an engraving machine with a fine needle point and then the tube is immersed in hydrofluoric acid and that etches the glass, exposed glass on those lines and numbers. Does not at all bother the wax. Then the wax is stripped off, a uh, ink is put into the uh, engraving and uh, over time that ink will wear out but the engraving is still there so you can still read the thermometer or add ink into it later if you need to redo that. There are all some, uh, also some silk screen and decals that are placed in on the tube and fired into the glass and that's a uh, difficult process because you have to put the tubes, the bulbs of the tubes in a very cold liquid to pull it down while you bake the top of the glass to bake this uh, decal or uh, printing on otherwise you'll blow the thermometers up by heating it in the oven. So here we have a typical glass tube you have your mercury bulb at the bottom, or it could be spirit filled. There's a little constriction there where it's welded together. The two pieces of glass are actually welded together. Then you have the column of liquid up the bore. Then you have a scale that's uh, either on the glass tube itself or an auxiliary metal scale behind it. And the, bo the bore of the uh, glass tube and the capillary are the same thing. Uh, people call it either way and the expansion chamber at the top to allow some overrange uh, to keep them uh, blowing the thermometer up in, within a reasonable span. In years past, there was what was called a full immersion thermometer where the entire thermometer was immersed in a liquid, allowed to stabilize, and then pull up only high enough to read it. After some time, uh, it was realized that a total immersion thermometer will give you pretty much the same results. A total immersion thermometer, you immerse it to, so the entire liquid column, whatever how far up it rises in the bore is immersed in your process or your liquid and is allowed to stabilize and then you only pull it up high enough to read it. That removes all external influences because this liquid, no matter where it is in this bulb and bore, is being affected by the ambient temperature around it. Then there is a partial immersion thermometer, uh, usually with an immersion line engraved or printed uh, on the thermometer. Uh, usually the most common is three inches or 76 millimeters from the bottom. It's immersed down to that line. The rest of the thermometer is exposed to whatever's around it. You can have a uh, accuracy, very good accuracy if the remaining part of the thermometer is exposed to the same ambient it's calibrated at. For instance, if it was 76 degrees Fahrenheit around the upper part of the tube in the factory the day you calibrated it and you used it in 76 degrees, so you had a fifth degree division partial immersion thermometer, you could get fifth degree accuracy if you used it in that same ambient temperature. However, ASTM allows on partial immersion thermometers a tolerance of up to two degrees to allow for the rest of that thermometer being exposed to very cold or very hot temperatures which will affect the part of the, the mercury or spirit fill that's above the immersion line. And spirit fills are much more 
affected by ambient temperature changes around them than mercury is because the spirit fields has a have a much higher coefficient of expansion. Uh, the immersion line is marked on the uh, partial immersion. And those are generally used for areas where you can't, you simply don't have room to immerse the entire mercury column. Like you're putting it into a thermal well that you might take a cap off a thermal well, you'll have some mercury or some other liquid down in that thermal well and you'll put your thermometer down in it, take a reading and pull it out and put the cap back on the well. There's no way to get the entire mercury column or thermometer down inside that well. So here we have a couple of different things uh, shown. On the lower left, we have what's called a parallax reading error. If you have three people of three different heights read the same thermometer, they'll usually get three different readings because they're not looking at the top of the mercury column in relation to a graduation line in the same uh, way others are. You always have to look at the thermometer exactly 90 degrees to the side of the thermometer. Above at the top, you see a, a, a couple of other terms we haven't mentioned before. Auxiliary scale, a lot of the precision laboratory thermometers, no matter what the temperature range is above, will have an ice point scale on them. On, on uh, certified thermometers, you might have uh, 32 or Fahrenheit or 0 C as part of the range. If so, you don't need that, but say you start at 100 and go up to, say, 300. You can have an ice point scale there as a reference point. And what that's for is on certified thermometers, if you um, want to check your calibration, your certification, to see if it's still valid, you can put the thermometer in an ice bath, let it stabilize and read it compared to the certificate that comes with the thermometer. If the ice point has shifted at all, the entire scale of the rest of the scale of the thermometer will shift exactly the same amount. So you can then make a correction on your certificate and it will still be good. Glass shrinks as it's aged, especially when it's heated. So the higher the temperature they're exposed to, the greater the shrinkage of the glass. Now high quality thermometer manufacturers will artificially age their glass. They'll run it through a series of temperature steps up and then bring it down to pre-shrink the glass to remove most of that possibility. However, no matter what you do, if you operate at very high temperatures, the glass will still shrink. In the uh, lower right, in the uh, orange thing, in the orange scale, and then into, up the top, you'll see a contraction chamber. What that is for is if you have the bottom of the scale starts at a very high temperature, this gives you a place to have a, some storage of mercury for your uh, ambient temperatures. Say if the thermometer started at 500 degrees and went to 800 degrees uh, on the old mercury thermometers, which we could do, then you would need a contraction chamber to hold the volume of mercury to, uh, to get it up to that point. Because at ambient temperature, you do not want the mercury to go back down into the bulb. If you do that and it comes out of the bulb into the bore each time, it's likely to separate and you'll have an air gap in it. Uh, again, we have the expansion chamber at the top. Uh, this just kind of shows an overview of different uh, types of thermometers. Here's the uh, ice point scale on this one. We talked about how that you can do check your uh, certifications to see if they're still good. There is a number of types of thermometers, of, of specialty thermometers. On the left, you have a mercury thermometer. The second one is a blue spirit filled. Uh, the third one is a red spirit filled, and you will see an immersion line on it about a third of the way up the tube. The fourth one is also a red spirit with an immersion line. The next to last thermometer, you will see a tapered glass joint on the bottom. And what this is for is laboratory use where they're using uh, beakers with those tapered uh, fill mouths uh, where they take a glass stopper out, uh, put the thermometer in, take a reading, and remove the thermometer and put a tapered glass stopper back in to seal it up. It's especially one used for specific applications. The one on the right is a thermometer in an armored case. This protects it from being banged around, uh, being hit, and, and less likely to be broken. Uh, those can be either total or partial immersion. 
The issue in there is that it takes a lot longer to stabilize because you have to heat not only the glass tube up, but you have to heat all the metal that it's in before it will stabilize. And there's also uh, the third thermometer from the right and the first thermometer to the far left, you will see at the bottom, it says safety coat, you will see like a plug at the bottom. These two thermometers are inside of a Teflon sleeve with a plug sealed at the bottom so that if they break the tube, all the broken glass and the mercury or spirit filled is contained inside the Teflon sleeve. The uh, main reason for the spirit fills being contained, they're not hazardous, but the dyes in them, if you get them on your clothes or on a countertop or whatever, they will permanently stain uh, anything they touch. And on the lower right, you see the partial immersion line we talked about before. Uh, mercury spill thermometers can may be made in divisions and accuracy as fine as a hundredth of a degree. In the laboratory world, there have been two common standards used for years, ASTM, American Science Society for Testing and Materials, and that's still a valid society, a, a valid regulatory place, and most of the specifications from ASTM are more dimensional. The length of the tube, the diameter of the glass, the immersion depths, the graduations, and so on. There are some accuracy and tolerance specs, but not a whole lot. SAMA was the Scientific Apparatus Manufacturers Association. Many of the lower cost uh, standard uh, laboratory thermometers used just for general use with respect to their specs, but they've now been disbanded and is no longer an active organization. Industrial thermometers, these are thermometers that are enclosed in a metal case designed to be screwed into a process or partial immersion thermometers. Bulb portion is enclosed in a metal stem of assorted configurations, usually with a threaded connection above the stem, and the reading portion of the glass tube is enclosed in a protective case, either with a metal scale behind it, the metal scale is marked either engraved or printed, or in a few cases, some of the low costs actually will have the graduations on the glass tube itself with no metal scale. Here we have our economy industrial thermometers. These are generally always adjustable angle. We offer both uh, plastic and aluminum cases. We offer plastic cases up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and spirit fills up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and either blue or red, with blue being the most common. Unless you specify red, you will always get blue. We also build mercury versions of these in all uh, ranges and also up to 500 degrees in the aluminum case only. These are mainly used for the HVC PVF market, for commercial buildings, for water and steam lines, air ducting. In the center picture to the right, you will see an open element bulb where the glass tube itself is exposed inside of this metal sheath. And there's a guard around it to allow the air to flow around it, and that gives the air conditioning or heat duct temperatures. Plastic cases are available in 7 inch and 12 inch or 9 inch scale lengths, the aluminum and 9 inch and 12 inch scale lengths. These are our heavy industrial grade uh, classic industrial thermometers. These have traditionally been used for food processing, tire manufacturing, and breweries, so on. They're available in 9 and 12 inch scale lengths. The cases are extruded brass that is nickel plated. All the other competitors uh, use a black case around the thermometer. That black case is a huge radiator so you're sucking heat up the stem uh, from your process and radiating it out into the atmosphere. These uh, shiny cases, polished surface is a poor emitter. It gives off very little heat so that you're not losing heat out of your case like you are those black cases. The big issue there for users is in the food processing industry or the tire press industry where you're using these thermometers in steam. The uh, thermometers with stem lengths of six inches or shorter will read as much as two to three degrees different in steam than they will in oil. They're generally always calibrated in oil than used in steam in the processes. And that black case will radiate so much heat because steam and oil put heat into the thermometer at different rates, even though both may be at the same temperature. 
steam will put heat into the thermometer much faster than oil will. We don't have that issue with these shiny cases. These are available with mercury fill up to 750 degrees, uh, down to minus 40. And spirit fills uh, from minus 40 up to uh, uh, 300 Fahrenheit and the equivalent Celsius. They're 9 or 12 inch scales. That's the actual scale length, not the case, the printed scale. They're either engraved brass and painted uh, white or aluminum or printed aluminum scales, depending on the temperature range and application. They're available in straight, 90 degree back, right or left side angles, 30 degree and 45 degree fixed incline angles, and 30, 45, 75, and 105 degree fixed recline angles. The standard stem lengths go from three and a half to 48 inches. Other lengths are available in special order to check with the factory to find out uh, what's concerned, what you need to do to get that done. The uh, 210 series classic industrial prover tank thermometers are the same as the thermometers we just spoke about. These are used for usually custody transfers of gasoline and petroleum products through uh, lines where there's an expansion contraction from ambient temperature, so you want a very precise temperature reading so you can accurately compensate for expansion or contraction losses of product being pumped through these lines. Uh, these are being more and more replaced by RTDs uh, as they get better quality and, and uh, people have power to run them. These are used where there's no power. The only difference between these and the previous thermometers we looked at is the instead of painted scales, they have a nickel plated scale so that the gasoline vapors will not uh, remove the paint. This is the adjustable angle version of those thermometers. These use a clear lacquered aluminum case instead of the brass case with adjustable angle uh, configurations. Uh, we go from uh, mercury with mercury from minus 40 up to 400 and the spirit fills from minus 40 up to 300. Uh, then over to the right is a little economy aluminum case, narrow case thermometer uh, with a uh, pipe thread connection and that pipe thread can be uh, used as a thermal well, a little brass stem and you can pull the thermometer out by loosening a set screw and replacing it if the tube gets broken. These thermometers are available with RTD or thermocouple uh, sensors in the uh, probes beside the glass tube and you can get either an output to a meter if you want to check uh, a thermometer in line uh, and you can actually calibrate them in line. The uh, Also available with uh, transmitters on uh, conduit connectors on the back of the case. You can either have a straight RTD or thermocouple out or a 4 to 20 milliamp output. And we use type J or type K thermocouples for those who want it. PT100 Platinum 3 wire RTDs are standard. We do liquid and glass thermometers for the dairy industry. These are uh, called a clean liner. They have a clear cylinder with a cap on them. They're hermetically sealed so they can be hosed down. And they can, uh, so if you need to blast your floors clean with a high pressure hose, these will stand it. They're available in straight configuration, either with a flat cap or a hook on the top to uh, connect a, uh, a winch to, you put a little chain with a hook on it lift it up or down, going into uh, airspace uh, tanks, storage tanks. We have uh, swivel nut connections to go into weld in projectile wells. We have the triclover and cherry burrell sanitary connections. So those are available. Uh, these are all mercury fill, no spirit fills in these. The FDA would not allow spirit fill thermometers for pasteurization in the dairy industry. Liquid glass tube thermometers have uh, many accessories available. We have thermal wells, screw in, both with and without extension necks to go through insulation, weld in, sanitary. We have union hubs, which is uh, the uh, larger picture right in the center. That's in essence a thermal well with the bottom cut off. Your probe is exposed to the process directly, but you have the same uh, connections uh, internally as the thermal wells so you can fit the same uh, threaded fittings into it and uh, go in the same locations. Then we also have flanged thermal wells for high pressure locations. 
These have both raised or flat face uh, flanges available, bolt down, uh, many different pressure ratings, different sizes for different applications. If you have any questions, uh, please give us a call at any time. My email is agclark at palmerwall.com. Uh, you can reach us at 800-421-2853. My direct extension is 309. Thank you.